Coming up, what nobody is telling you about your car versus greenhouse. Today's report is proudly sponsored by a knee in the nuts for respected journalist Paul Bongiorno. Cars and emissions, it's so friggin' complex, <laughs> you peanut. What was he thinking, I wonder? Full details next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Australian new car buyers save thousands off their brand new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. A loyal viewer named Jamie Fitzgerald put me onto this story. He's the guy who spotted it, so blame him. It's not my fault. Jamie runs Garage Blitz here in the knee of Sid, so you should certainly go and check him out if your personal fat cave needs something of a birthday. It's the same sort of thing as getting fake tits, if you're a man. Actually, just for disambiguation on that, a man should not get fake tits, not ever. Not that there's anything wrong with it, if you really must, I suppose, but what I really meant was bolt-on boobies for a chick. It's roughly the same thing as a comprehensive fat cave upgrade, if you're a man. They're both top-shelf improvements, when you think about it. So, anyway, Paul Bongiorno, so-called respected political journalist, took this seemingly poor decision to talk about emissions and cars recently, and that was a judgmental error, in my view, because he appears to have shot himself rather publicly <laughs> in the cock. And if you're going to shoot yourself... The cock is probably the worst place to do it. I think you'd agree, especially in public. I mean, everyone would know and it would, pretty soon it would go viral and nobody wants that. This whole negligent downstairs discharge on emissions was on a thing called the Eureka Report, a kind of hoity-toity politico-finance investment almost podcast yesterday. It's a bit soft cock in my view. Holster, hosted, 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 hosted hosted by Alan Collar, who you might see on ABC News from time to time, where he impersonates occasionally one of those somewhat stern Easter Island statues, seemingly. Have a listen. Just finally, the um, I noticed this, the science minister, Karen Andrews, came out this morning in the Sydney Morning Herald mm. saying that, um, you know, we've got to stop talking about climate change and get on with dealing with it. Um, yeah, right. And she's convening a roundtable of top scientists on Wednesday to yeah. kickstart yeah. work in response to it. I mean, uh, do, do you take that? Do you think that's a uh, you know an important move? Well, that's the tactic laid bare, and sure, we do have to deal with it. But what does she want? She, does she want the CSRO to invent a new fire retardant? How about listening to the CSRO scientists just say, we've got to get uh, smarter, not only in renewable energy, but what about electric cars? 60% of our emissions come from vehicles. 60% of our emissions come from vehicles. Really? Last time I looked, you know, we had these things, they're called... Um, they're called facts. And that is not one of them. What a load of bullshit. So tell me, Mr. Bongiorno, did you just pull that number out of your ass, or how did you actually arrive at it? Because according to the latest quarterly update of Australia's National Greenhouse Gas Inventory, which would be the June 2019 update, it's a lot less than that, mate. This data is from the Federal Government's Department of the Environment and Energy. And these are, of course, the dudes who crunch these numbers against an internationally approved standard. Confirming the facts on this is not actually that hard. You kind of download a PDF and you scroll all the way to page 8. So it's like three clicks and a three-second scroll to get there. Even an award-winning TV journalist should be able to do that, I'd suggest, like, on a good day. Total transport emissions, 18.9%. That's total transport, okay? Of that total transport emissions, about 9% is aviation, about 4% is rail, and about 82% 
is road transport and the balance is, you know, sundry transport that you and I can't really think of. It's just in the extras box. 82% road transport. So presumably when award-winning TV bullshitter says 60% of emissions come from vehicles, the kindest that I can be here is to presume that he means vehicles equals total road transport which is 82% of 18.9% of total national greenhouse emissions, or about 15% of the total emissions, which is a hell of a long way from 60. I mean, if you make that kind of error, getting the crew back on Apollo 13 that fateful day, they kind of don't get back. And that's a problem. Fourfold error, like, I just can't tolerate that. But then, he has even more of a brain fade and pivots to start talking about, quote, electric vehicles as some kind of a proposed solution, presumably, which is being officially ignored. Have a listen to that. What about electric cars? 60% of our emissions come from vehicles. We've got the dirtiest petrol in the developed world and we're doing nothing to foster electric vehicles. What about that? because that directly confronts the ideological block against climate change. So let's deep dive into that, shall we? Because the only electric vehicles I know of currently are alternative cars, right? Alternatives to cars. EVs are an alternative to conventional internal combustion cars. So I think he's kind of implying that we could replace internal combustion cars with EVs and start to cure what on planet Bongiorno is 60% of our emissions. So his focus appears to me to be cars and not total road transport. Inconveniently, according to the Climate Council, cars are only 46% of total transport emissions because there's rather a lot of heavy long distance trucks doing business out there on the road, you may have noted. Cars would therefore be only 46% of 18.9% of the total, which is about 9% of Australia's total greenhouse emissions, which is even further from the 60% Mr Bongiorno alleged. I think you'd agree. And if you replaced all Australian cars with EVs tomorrow, greenhouse from cars and this is just on the fuel side, not considering the life cycle side and the energy intensity of battery production. Greenhouse from cars would not drop to zero because we'd be fueling them up with Australian electricity, which is the biggest contributor to greenhouse in this country by a mile. And if we pulled off this miracle, Emissions from cars would drop, okay? Definitely would drop. If we all drove EVs tomorrow, emissions from cars would drop. It would be less than 9%, but it would be more than zero. That's how much tackling cars can move the national greenhouse needle. Less than nine, more than zero, okay? The thing that shits me about award-winning respected mouthpieces like Mr. Bongiorno who wing it on air and apparently fuck it up so epically in the process is that they do just as much damage potentially as the politicians they attempt to criticise. In my view, this 60% claim is socially irresponsible. And I'm not suggesting that it's intentional here. It's probably just an intersection of ignorance and confidence on air, okay? But whatever, Mr. Bongiorno's comments foster the public view that the car is a major contributor to Australian greenhouse emissions when this is categorically false. Cars are 9%. With public sentiment so heavily focused on climate change right now, thanks mainly to the fires and political change potentially in the wings, I would respectfully argue that the facts here are quite important so that the population can advocate for solutions that might actually hope to work and not demonise a segment that in fact makes very little difference no matter how intensively it is tackled. Proposing EVs as a purported solution to our national greenhouse emissions is merely 
ignorant bullshit. Misrepresenting the emissions of vehicles in this way is every bit as damaging as the cynical performance of the Federal Science Minister Karen Andrews and her boss, dumb scummo, which Mr Bongiorno was criticising at the same time as shooting himself in his fine feathered friend down there. And perhaps you wonder why people really don't trust conventional journalists. The greenhouse problem is not cars, okay? It's overwhelmingly coal. Electricity and other stationary energy sources, they make up 53% of this country's total greenhouse emissions. That's 270 odd million tonnes of CO2 equivalent. But what is really disgraceful, like properly disgraceful environmentally, is the amount of coal that Australia exports. In 2016, Australia was the world's largest net exporter of coal, with 32% of global exports. That was some 389 million tonnes. And just spitballing this, okay, in the domain of applied science, 389 million tonnes of coal becomes about 1 billion tonnes of CO2. Billion with a B. 1 billion tonnes of CO2 equivalent once you burn it in China or wherever it's going. That's just basic high school combustion chemistry, and I'm assuming coal is about 80% carbon in that particular spitball. So basically, by exporting that coal, we effectively managed to double our total national onshore greenhouse emissions. So we've got 500 odd million tonnes onshore, and we send another billion tonnes offshore. We do that in the form of coal that is sold to other countries. That's an inconvenient truth, I think, that is being consistently swept under the rug and something the likes of Paul Bongiorno could actually add value to the public discourse by disclosing, I'd suggest. But actual research would be needed if you wanted to do that. So, the bottom line, I guess, is that if anybody ever tells you that we are only 1% of global emissions, then I'd suggest they're being a disingenuous bullshitter. It's actually triple that, right? Two thirds of the burnings just occurs in other countries, but it is we who are providing the fuel. So surely we need to be accountable, at least in part, morally accountable for all of that. When you include coal exports, Australia's total greenhouse contribution to the planet is more like 1.5 billion tonnes of CO2 equivalent, okay? Cars on Australian roads, they're just about 50 million tonnes. So cars represent 3% of our emissions on that basis. I can guarantee you that most of the people who are engaging in the climate change debate, specifically over what we do about it, do not know these simple facts, okay? Very frustrating, isn't it? Now, I know what you're thinking, and just for the record, no, I do not hate EVs. EVs are great for clean air in our cities, and exhaust pollution is absolutely such a killer. And plugging in overnight at home is far more pleasant, I'd suggest, than visiting any filling station, at least among the filling stations that I have ever visited, culminating in that uplifting exchange with Apu over the two-for-one Kit Kat deal. Yes, how unbeatable. And an opportunity to worship one of our favourite gods, Diabetes. Think about it. Some of those EVs go like friggin' cut cats too. You don't have to buy a Tesla Model S. A Kona EV is just very speedy indeed. EVs, also an excellent weapon in the ongoing quest for national energy security, which is a real problem in Australia owing to the fragility of the liquid fuel supply chain. But EVs remain a sideshow for greenhouse, right? And this is, of course, my biggest problem with Elon Musk. Musk is a proven epic bullshitter who is just successfully marketing EVs as a planet saver, and that concept is getting serious traction with scientifically illiterate dipshit millennials, or as I prefer to think of them, the policymakers of the future. 
And that's a real concern. Because if you want to solve greenhouse, you need your eye on the ball. And the ball happens to be made of coal. It really is that simple, right? If you don't tackle coal, you don't tackle Australia's greenhouse emissions. And if you don't tackle greenhouse, the future is toast literally. Bear in mind that there is considerable well-funded institutional resistance to this concept. Our god-bothering Prime Minister, Scummo, he's a disgraceful coal humper from way back. So there's that. Paul Bongiorno, Alan Collar, Karen Andrews, Scott Morrison, I mean shame on all of you. And do try to friggin' keep up. It's really not that hard. This issue actually matters because Australians have had enough of high-level bullshit on climate, on both sides, uninformed bullshit. It's time for a few facts, I think, and a bit of hard science. That would make a pleasant change. So you dudes with influence, with platforms, you might try doing at least basic research before you flip the friggin' camera on, and you might like to get some talent on air who actually knows the data. That would make a pleasant change as well. So, upliftingly, that's all I've got for you today. And remember now, between now and next time I inflict myself upon you, and I will try to be more upbeat next time, do attempt to make Australia less shit. Someone has to. Yeah.